All right, here we go. Well, a good start. Not a huge fish, but a good start here at Wood Lake. Beautiful little lake we're at here. Kind of halfway between Vernon and Kamloops. There's a whole bunch of different lakes here. And we chose Wood Lake. We got some advice from Al Long at the Kamloops Fly Shop. And he said, come over to Woods Lake. It's a pretty little lake, and it is. It's a gorgeous lake here. And uh, he says, there's some nice sized fish, although this guy isn't going to get in the category of nice sized fish. He's just a good, good starting fish, is all this guy is. But what I did is I, I put on a, a chronomet. It actually started with a, a damsel fly for a little bit. Started with a damsel. Didn't have any luck with the damsel because I saw some damsels around. Look at this net nice and wet first here. And uh, then switch it to chronomids because we're getting a little bit of a riffle on the water. And of course, when we get a riffle, we like to fish chronomids, especially in these lakes in British Columbia. And uh, there he goes. And what I did was I started with a chromie. I'll have to show you the fly here in a second if I can find it. It's probably in my net. And uh, I had a large chromie on, and first two casts with it, he was just kind of leaning on it. I saw my, see my big uh, yellow ball indicator that I'm using today. Just started to go down by the time I said it was gone. So what I did is I went from a size 14 to a size 16. I went one size smaller. Third time I was able to, to get him. And uh, he uh, snapped me off. I think my fly is actually right in here. And uh, well, we'll keep going here. It looks like it's going to be a good day of fishing. Well, there you go. The fly fisherman's nightmare right there. What that is, is not the exact same fly that I just used. When I had, I had a silver body with a red rib, but I had one. And when the fish was bouncing around like it was, of course, it snapped me off. And now I'm going to go to this little green guy and give it a try. It's the same size, but it's just totally different colors. And when fish are finicky, I tell you, sometimes it's the color is the key. Even though some people say, well, fish can't see in colors. Well, maybe they can't, but they can see in shades. And uh, we'll give this a try and we'll find out how true that's going to be today. So don't go away. We're going to be right back with some more from Sport Fishing on the Fly at Wood Lake. Oh, what a lot of fun. Well, just had on a little chromie. Remember, I just showed you the little green chronomid? Now well, the green chronomid worked too. So I think maybe it's more a size thing today and maybe location. Just when we finished that last segment off, the lake just died off. There wasn't any riffle at all. Well, the riffles come back and what a difference it makes. As soon as you get that riffle, you seem to be able to get into fish. Uh, this guy is maybe a, a little bit bigger, not a lot bigger, maybe a little bit bigger. And, uh, Hopefully that's going to be a progression as the day goes on, that they keep getting bigger and bigger. You get the big uh, Z on there, he's gone. Ah, he got off. He went down and he weeded me and he got off. Well, I guess we won't know how big he was. He was a little bit bigger. Each time you cast, you watch your strike indicator land and you look, I've got a weight on and my fly, so I'm looking for two little plops that go in behind the strike indicator. That way I know things haven't got tangled up. It increases your chances of catching a fish. Oh, it's fun. They're smaller fish right now, but it's every cast you're picking up a fish. So it's, it's kind of fun. A little bit, so this is kind of like the same size as the first guy. We just didn't film the last one that I, I caught and he was, uh, he was actually smaller than this one. And then that's what happened to the first one. The first guy, remember that? He was spinning around like that, so I lost my fly. Oh, it a little looks not bad there, Granny. Not a bad size. Well, they're all, uh, right now, they're the ones that be cruising seem to be this size. Yeah, okay, you ready now? I'm just gonna grab my fly. Well, well hopefully the bigger guys will start how moving. Small he is, and off he goes. Hopefully the bigger guys will start cruising soon. Well, that's what I'm hoping. Actually, Les had a good idea. I said, uh, why don't you try a bigger fly? You know, the big fly, big fish <laughs> theory. <laughs> but I think the reason I'm picking them up is because I'm on the right size right yeah. now. I think it's a real size dependent thing. And it's 18. An 18, yeah, Boy, 18 chronomid. That's pretty tiny. Yeah. Wow. Well, why don't we go through the uh, recommended setup for chronomids? Probably a good idea. I wish I would have caught a fish so far today. Well, you've been working hard with the chronos. I, I, I got have. lucky. I caught three in a row. Yeah, you went, you went out there and, and you got a good spot too. But a few little guys were moving. I think the best setup for the chronomid, we're using nine foot uh, five weights today. Yep. Real nice setup. 
and again long leaders. We're having to go long leaders. So what we've done is put on our nice long 15 foot leaders and we've attached about five feet of the uh, fluorocarbon. Right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change it up. I'm going to bail on the chronometing and actually go to the, the sinking line now and see if I can catch them on the damsel. But before we do that, yeah. this little size 18 chronometer worked pretty good for a little while today. Yeah. So why don't we go to the bench and maybe you can tie one up. Sure. Sounds good. All right. Sometimes there's a necessity to tie small flies, especially when small insects are coming off. The only difference between tying a size 12 and an 18 is you have to have good eyesight and a lot of practice. So today we're going to tie you up the tiny green chronomid. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We use a size 18 TMC 2487 hook. We'll tie using some UTC 70 olive thread. For the bead we'll use a 330 seconds gold some white antron for the gills, some olive thread for the body, some small copper wire for the rib, and some peacock curl for the thorax. To start the fly off, I've put my bead onto my hook and I've slid it to the back of the hook. And we're just going to take our thread and start a layer of thread on the hook. Take a small pinch of white antron and we're just going to put this right near the eyelet of the hook for the gills. And we'll cut off the excess. Now that I have the gills tied in, I'm going to take the bead from the back of the hook, move it forward, up over the gills, and then just move my thread right behind the bead. Now that I have my thread behind the bead, I'm going to take a small copper wire, and I'm just going to tie it in, and this will be used for the ribbing later. We have the ribbing tied in. I'm going to take my olive thread and slowly build up a body. And again, this is a very small fly, so keep the body nice and thin and tapered towards the bead. We have a tapered body tied in. We're going to take our small copper wire, make about two to three turns at the bend of the hook, and then make three to four turns up the hook for the ribbing. Taking one strand of peacock curl, and we're going to tie it in just behind the bead. And we're going to take just two wraps of peacock curl to form a thorax. To finish the fly off, we're going to whip finish behind the bead. And then we'll cut off our excess thread. And then we're going to go and cut the gills to the proper length with it just smaller than an eighth inch long. You know, it's always a good idea to have some small chronomids in your box because there are days when the fish are finicky and that's all they're feeding on. Well, you know, back in that corner, had a lot of good action with the chronomid. They're all smaller fish. And so I thought, well, it just seemed to slow down a little bit. And it looked like the size of the chronomids that were coming off got even smaller than uh, what I was fishing with, that size 18. So I decided to switch it up a little bit. I put on my Aqualux, clear Aqualux line with a damselfly. And I was actually putting some more sunscreen on because the sun was starting to break through. And uh, ended up picking this guy up as I was trolling along. I think he's about ready to come in here. I think what I'm gonna do is just spin around again. All about the same size. They're all, uh, this guy's, I'd like to be able to throw a sample one of these guys, but it's just not quite big enough. Don't lose my fly again. And you just relax. Upside down, you disorient them. So you can get your fly out. There we go. There's the fish, little guy. I oh, always got uh, a couple of worms on him or something there. Well, they call these, I think, the forgotten fly. There's a lot of fishermen who will only fish these flies, but there's a lot of guys who never fish them, and they're dragonflies. And what we got here is a handful of 
all the different types of dragonflies that you get now. What we're going to do the two is, main ones. The two main well, ones. Well, the, the main ones, yeah. yeah. Okay. In British Columbia. Yeah. So, what we're we going to start with? We'll start with the smallest? Whoa, that guy's hanging on. Sure. Go through this different stages. That guy's clinging on to ours here. <laughs> They're moving all over. Okay. Here's the little guy. This is this is a little little baby, the little yearling guy. He's just starting out. And there's the little tiny guy there. And there's a good imitation. You know, it's about the same size. It's got the little legs out, and he's very small. That's a little baby green darner. That's probably, and it's just hatched a while ago, and it's yeah. just starting out. And now we'll put these back, and we'll go to the next stage. And they get a little older. This guy's in a yearling. He's getting to be about a year old. And there's a good imitation for him right there. This guy's get, he's fairly dark. He's getting ready to molt yeah, the second we'll time. Yeah. But there's a good imitation for him right there. You know, kind of again trying to match that size. And a nice casing. Well, that's the key, isn't it? Getting the size. Coloring as well is important. Oh, yeah, and here's what you get in the second and third year <laughs> is the big, the big darners. Now, that guy's two to three years. He's getting ready to come out. Oh, that's a become, meal, too. That's a big meal. And there's what you got to imitate. Perfect size again. Look at the big eyeballs, the big head. A real good match. And we've had really good success with big patterns like that. Only because, look at, I mean, they match perfectly, don't yeah, they? They sure do. So those are all the different green darners. Well, the neat thing about the darner, too, is how fast they move in the water. Oh, they propel themselves by putting water in their back uh, abdomen area there. And they just squirt the water out in the back and they propel themselves. Yeah. And they can move pretty good. And they're voracious predators. And then this one was really classified as a gomphus before. And I know uh, Brian Chan corrected me and called them a little Bulidae dragonfly, but a lot of people still refer to them as a gonfus, and that's just a little short chubby guy. These gonfus are a lot, uh, a lot thicker, and a lot smaller, but quite fat. And there's a good imitation pattern for them again. Just made it a deer hair, it floats real nice. Again, and you, the size of these obviously make for excellent meals for the fish, because they're big, yeah, I mean, they don't have to eat so many of them. Yeah, and they're crawling around. They are really voracious predators. Oh, that guy here. Yeah, they're wicked predators, and when they mooching around, the best place to find them too, if you go to a lake and you want to see them, find some old wood, turn it over, anywhere there was old fallen trees and stuff like that, because they're all, they just sit in there, they cling to the trees and they pick up shrimp and mayfly nymphs and everything going by them. Oh, you, them. you talked about these being predators, remember we had a vial at yeah. one of the lakes we were at and a dragonfly actually ate one of the mayfly nymphs yeah. in the vial. Yeah, mayfly nymph was wiggling in there, he didn't have a chance. It was one of the big darners, one of yeah. the big darners grabbed them and started snarfing. All right, well, there's a, a pretty good selection of dragonflies. When you're at a lake, you want to get right down on the bottom because the dragonflies are always at the bottom. Yeah. They, they just crawl around, as you can see, they're crawling around our hands here. They're always crawling along the bottom yeah. of the lake. So if you're fishing, you got to make sure you get your line right down to the bottom. Use a full sink line, get right down. And on the shoals too, they'll always stay low. They'll crawl up the shoals to get to the shoreline where they're going to hatch. And you've got to be right on the bottom. So a real good way is, again, with a full sinking line with a you know, a nice dry pattern, like that's made of deer hair and that's going to float up off the bottom so you're not going to get caught in the weeds. Right. Very effective pattern for that. Try different retrieves, different speeds, but these things can move very quick, so don't be afraid to move it real fast. Exactly. The big yeah. darners, again, propel themselves, so the faster the better. And these little golfers or little bulidae, nice and slow, yeah. they just like to crawl. They're crawlers. Yeah. Right on. Well, let's get these guys back so they can do their thing and maybe become <laughs> fish food or <laughs> someday yeah. become some nice big dragonfly. Well, I hope somebody, I hope everybody learns something about dragons. Yeah. All right, we're back at Woods Lake here in the Okanagan and we're showing the damselfly earlier, so why not show one of the strip techniques there yeah, for the damselfly? Yeah, I think one of, the, one of the best ones we use is a real quick little jerk retreat. I do is little, real quick little figure eights. Yeah and just let it sit, and again, as you're kicking, you want to keep that in a steady motion, and again, just little jerky, quick pulls. Yeah, just like we showed you goats at the, we saw give the actual, some motion. Yeah, yeah, moving through the water. Another thing we can do is if you just want to troll, if you're going to eat or do something like that, yeah. just shake the rod tip, so you hold the line in one hand, you put, I like to actually put my rod right in the water, but I'll show you above it, just shake it back and forth like this. Yeah. What I do yeah. is actually put it right down in the water and do the shake in the water. Right. And as you're kicking along, that just gives it that motion. Yeah, and it's pulling on the line. You think of what it's actually doing the line. It's wiggling it, it's pulling it, and that fly is, is jerking along the water. Yeah. Anything to try and give that fly that little bit of motion. That's why we talked about the marabou having a nice marabou tail on it yeah. is a really good thing, too. All right. Well, the LGF strikes again. You know, we, we had trouble with the chronomids because they seemed to turn off the chronomids for a little while there. And so I put on the 
little damselfly imitation. And I just started cruising and went down the far side and picked the one off that we saw there and then decided to come down this side here. And uh, well, I finally got myself into a little bigger fish. Actually, a lot bigger fish. This is, this is kind of the size we were hoping to, to get into today. And uh, what I should do is maybe talk about the setup that I've got. And what I chose today was a five weight rod. And what I was thinking <laughs> when I was catching those 12 and 14 inch fish was I was way overpowered in the rod department. But somebody told us, no, you can expect to catch some lots of 16 inch fish, some healthy ones. You can even get them up to 20 inches. So that's why I selected the five weight rod. I'm using for my damselfly setup here, I've got the clear Aqualux line. It's a six weight, weight forward line, really good casting line, you cast a mile. And for tip it on, I've got some five pound Fluoroflex, again, a real product, Fluoroflex, fluorocarbon type product. And I've gone with five pound. I was just thinking I might have to change that. Oh, there we go. Because I wasn't hooking anything up. There it is. Look at that. Now, here's the type of size of fish that we came to see today here. You know, I like this net to start with. I'm beginning not to like it because it's too deep of a net. There we go, that guy is oh, about 17 inches. My opening on my net is 16. That guy there is about 17. Net out of the road. You wanna make sure with these big fish after they've given you a good tussle like that, that you revive them well so they don't go belly up down to the bottom. You want this guy, to, the gal, to live to fight again. A fish, finally, a fish. Well, what did you get them on? Oh, I got them on a little, uh, little sparkle leech. A sparkle leech. Yeah, yeah, a little sealed seal leech, actually. It's been, uh, it's been to say the least, a tough day of fishing. I had the good luck early with the coronamids there. It came it went really good for a little yeah, while. And a little then, bit. Uh, got into some damsels. Yeah, those guys pulling pretty good. Oh, they fight well here. Oh, there was a lot of fish fun. moving at one time too. There was a few fish here and there, but just not coming off. You know, yeah. we act, we actually one of the guys kept the fish. Yeah. That was on shore, so we went through the stomach sample, and it was just chock full of about size 24 chronomids, but they were clear. Yeah, how clear do you match that? Ah, oh, you're, you're just not good. And he was, he was feeding heavy on them, and they, they came off. Like, this, this is what I consider a midge. Anything under yeah. a size 24 <laughs> is not a midge, it's a midget. You're not, <laughs> you're not gonna get them. This guy's not bad. Oh, that's about the size we've been catching today. Well, uh, still, you know, there, there's a lot bigger fish in here. Yeah, we just didn't hit it on a good day, but, yeah. but it just shows you not everybody always has great days of fishing. Cool. This has just been our day of fishing. You got that right, because <laughs> that's it. There's one, that's all I got today, one fish. I'm I got a bump one. on a chronomid. I've been out here flailing the dead water <laughs> for hours, and it's finally coming at nighttime, and I got this guy. Yeah, maybe he's gonna turn on. Yeah, who knows, what are you gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try for two, though. <laughs> Right in the top part of the jaw, there he is. Let me see that. Ah, cool. Yeah, there he is, he's just a little guy. I'm not even gonna touch him, I'm just gonna... Uh, that's why I like that catch and release. Yeah, there he goes. That I got's too deep. I gotta get me one of those. Nice fly, I like that. Yeah, it's a uh, little seal bugger. Yeah. What he calls a seal bugger, but it's just made with the woven seal. That it's was kinda... from uh, Brent Schlenker. Yeah, Brent Schlenker over in Medicine Hat, and he gave us his pattern, it worked pretty good. Wow, pretty special day today. That was a little <laughs> tough fitting though, right at the end there. I had on the nice big long red leech and probably the biggest fish I had go after a fly today and it, it snapped me you off. You actually had a pretty good day. I did have not a bad day. Yeah. For how slow the fishing was. Yeah. You got five or six? Yeah, I got three in the chronomid and yeah. three or four on the, the little uh, LGF damselfly. And I got four. one. <laughs> Uno. And I, you know what, I just, I love chronomitting, but uh, you gotta go deep, you gotta go deep. And that's what I had to do. I had to put on my wet line, get it down there with a big seal bugger, and I happened to get a fish. I had to change it up. I had to change it up. <laughs> I had to resort. I didn't want to, but I did. You know, this lake is, I think, has a lot better days than it has bad oh, days. Sure. We just happened to pick a wrong day. Yeah. I the mean, weather's not really that good right now. No, and, and there are some very experienced fishermen out here, some yeah. really good fishermen from Vernon. 
And they're having problems too, and that's yeah. just the way it is. You know, it's, if it's not fishing good, it's not fishing good. The thing is, there are a lot of great lakes in this area. There's not just the lake, Woods Lake that we're at today. There's a lot of other really good lakes around here. Yeah. That when you get a chance to come out here, you should try them all out. Don't, oh, just, sure. don't do what we did. We picked the wrong one today. <laughs> <laughs> when you get a chance to come out though, please take care. And conserve the waters, get great fishing. Not like we had today, but this will be a good fishery. Oh, it is a good fishery. We saw some nice big fish cruising yeah. shells. We'll, yeah. we'll be back. So again. conserve the waters. See you next time. We're going to take you sport fishing on the fly.